All right. So my intention was to do a nice kind of calming nervous system, relaxing kind of practice today. So that's what I'm going to try and work on. Um, so we have two branches of our nervous system. We have our sympathetic and our parasympathetic, and they run parallel to each other in our bodies. And we need both of them. But in yoga, we talk a lot more about the parasympathetic branch of our nervous system, because a lot of times we get stuck in our sympathetic branch. And when we're in our sympathetic branch, it's like we're always on guard, we're ready to fight, we're ready to run, we're kind of amped up, um, our heart rate goes up, our blood pressure goes up, we're just kind of really activated. And then the opposite is the parasympathetic, which is helping us to be in more of a space of restoration and healing and calm. And so we kind of get stuck in that sympathetic branch. So we'll do some things today to be able to shift that and help us move a little bit more into parasympathetic. So unfortunately, our, our nervous system is wired such that it's easily activated, easily triggered into this sympathetic branch, but it takes a lot more time to get it to kind of go down. And the reason for that is very much related to survival. So if we see something dangerous and we need to react, it's like a split second our nervous system immediately goes into that fight flight survival mode and all those physiological things happen. Our blood flow goes out to our extremities to prepare us to do what we need to do away from our organs. Um, our digestion pretty much stops, slows down. Um, our mouth might get really dry. All those things are physiologically happening. But the parasympathetic is not quick like that. So it's not like instantaneously responsive like our, uh, paras our sympathetic is because like if we were in danger, we wouldn't want to shift into like, oh, like nice and relaxed and whatever, because then we'd be vulnerable to whatever was chasing us or coming after us. So that part of the nervous system is much slower to become active. So we need to take time, you know, and things like a yoga practice or Throughout our day, if we think about it, we don't do a lot of things that'll bring us into that really relaxed state. So that's what we're going to work on today. So go ahead, come onto your back. And if you want, you can have a pillow blanket under your head. All right. So... However you're most comfortable, let's uh, settle in for a few moments. I'm starting to find a nice, slow, even breath. Of course, we talk about in yoga how breath is, you know, one of the most important things that can help us uh, shift into a more relaxed state. Let your eyes be soft. And then bring your attention to your tongue. This is another uh, little tip for you. If your tongue is kind of like pressing against your teeth or kind of active, see if you can allow it to relax back in your mouth so that your tongue relaxes away from the back of your teeth. Just kind of let it settle into the uh, bottom of your mouth. And as you do that, just start to observe the tongue, observe the uh, bottom of your mouth. And as you breathe slowly and deeply, maybe notice if you can sense a little more moisture in the bottom of your mouth, in your tongue. And so when we do this little, move your tongue away from the back of the teeth and we um, just really let that tongue relax, it can be sort of a, back doorway into our parasympathetic. So we'll try to keep the tongue relaxed as we do our practice today, rather than get very grippy in our mouth, grippy in our face, our jaw, or even our feet. So we'll look at all those things in the practice today. All right, let's go ahead, bring your right knee into your chest. And your left leg could be bent or it could be straight, your choice. 
And we're just gonna do a couple things here. So as you inhale, let that knee move a little bit away. And as you exhale, bring it in towards your chest, draw your belly towards your spine. We've done that lots of times before. Let's do it two more rounds. Inhale, the knee moves slightly away. And then exhale, draw that knee in, draw your low belly in. And then one more time. Good, and then from here, hold behind the back of your thigh, interlace your hands. Then we're gonna take an inhale and extend that leg up towards straight. And as you exhale, bend your knee and pull the knee into your chest, draw your belly toward your spine. Now see if you can keep your thigh as close to your belly as you can and start to straighten your leg. And you might not go all the way straight depending on your hamstring. So just do what works for you. Um, maybe just even straighten part way. And then bend the knee, pull the knee in towards your chest, draw your belly towards your spine. And on your next inhale, extend and straighten that leg and the amount. So we're getting into the back of the body here, the back chain of our fascia. One more time. As you exhale, knee pulls closer to the chest. And then as you inhale, try to straighten the leg any amount. Now hold it there wherever you landed with your leg as straight as it'll be. And we're gonna pump the foot a little bit. So flex the foot and then point the toes. And as you flex the foot, you're gonna feel a little more pull on the back chain of the fascia along your calf, along your Achilles. So two more foot pumps. And then we're gonna release and bring that knee back into the chest. Okay, let's work on the other side. So right foot down or leg out, left knee into the chest. And then for a couple of rounds, we're gonna take an inhale. And then as you exhale, pull the knee in, pull the low belly toward the spine. And then try that a few more times. Inhale, knee moves slightly away. Exhale, pull it in. One more time, inhale, knee moves away. Exhale, pull it in and squeeze. And now we're gonna hold behind the back of your thigh, interlace your hands. And as you inhale, push up through your heel, straighten your leg. And as you exhale, bring that knee into your chest and try to keep the thigh as close to your chest as you can. And then inhale, straighten. Exhale, pull in. Good, two more like that. You got it. One more time. And then this time we're gonna keep the leg up there and pump the foot. So point and flex a few times. So oftentimes when we're stuck in uh, sympathetic, we're more, you know, the revved up branch of our nervous system, the back chain of the body is a lot tighter. So we're gonna work a little bit on back body, like hamstrings, stretching out the backs of the legs, things like that. Okay, let's bring both of our knees into the chest. We're gonna do the same thing now one more time with both legs, and then we're gonna get um, moving a little bit more. So inhale, both knees away. Exhale, pull in, hold behind the backs of your legs and straighten your legs any amount. And again, pull in as you exhale. Inhale, straighten those legs any amount. Good, exhale, pull into your chest. Inhale, straighten the legs. Last time. And now keep those legs up there and Point flex both feet at the same time. Your lower back should be on the ground, not kind of rounding and curving away from the ground. Okay, release, bring those knees into the chest. Good squeeze. And then we're gonna roll to the side. 
And we're gonna come on up into a seated posture. And you might want to sit up onto a pillow or a folded blanket, whatever you might find. Okay. So finding as comfortable a seat as you can, we're gonna sit up nice and tall. And initially, we're just gonna either close the eyes or let them softly gaze down at the floor. Bring your tongue back away from your bottom teeth and let your tongue rest in the bottom of your mouth. So that there's a slight part between your lips and your jaw is really soft and relaxed and not clenching at all. It's one of the first areas that gets really grippy when we're under a lot of uh, stress. And grip in our jaw, and that is also connected to the pelvic floor, and we might get tight and grippy in our pelvic floor, which is going to affect our lower back. Now, bring your hands in front of your eyes and bring your palms together and place them close to your forehead. That's it. Now, as you inhale, we're going to open the palms apart wide and imagine your vision spreading into the periphery. So your eyes get very kind of soft focused. And we are not so hyper focused with the eyes. And then bring your hands back together and then maybe close your eyes. As you inhale, open the eyes, softly take in as much as you can. So it's a wide peripheral vision. And then exhale, bring your hands back in. So when we do things like our warrior poses today, I want you to try and keep a nice soft open gaze because when we get super like hyper focused with our eyes, that's one of the things that can make us uh, go into that sympathetic. And now release, hands come down. Okay, so I'll remind you of some of these things like not um, getting all tight in your jaw, keeping your eyes soft, and we'll also talk about not gripping with our feet. From here, bring your hands in front of you onto the ground if you can. If you can't, just keep them up on your knees. And we're gonna take like a gentle sway side to side. And as you sway side to side, can you start to walk your hands out any amount coming toward a forward folding stretch? Now don't force it. The minute we start to force it, we're gonna get grippy in the body and we're not gonna be coming into that parasympathetic. Parasympathetic also important for our health our healing, our recovery, good for lowering our heart rate. And then at some point, when you feel like you've gone as far as you can, pause there and then let your head drop down. So come into a soft forward fold. Hold for three breath cycles. Let me send some breath into your lower back. One more. And then we're gonna slowly, slowly start to walk it back up and then pause when you get to the top. And we're just gonna switch our legs, bring the opposite leg in the front and we'll do that again. So even out your sit bones and then slowly start to bring your hands forward in front of you. And we're gonna take a gentle sway as we start to come forward. And this sway is almost like tricking your body into relaxing. It's almost like when you rock a child to sleep, there's sort of a lulling sensation when we gently sway the body side to side. And then once you feel like you've come as far as your body will allow, go ahead and pause, let your head drop, and take a few breaths. Send that breath into your lower back. One more. And after this next breath cycle, go ahead and slowly walk yourself up and just have a brief pause at the top so we don't rush into the next movement. Okay, so now when you're ready, let's come into tabletop, all fours. 
pad if you need to. All right, so we'll do a few cat cows. And I wanna give you a little instruction today on the movement of the chin, because we're gonna use that in a couple different postures. So as you inhale, we're arching the spine and give a little lift of your chin, but try not to kind of throw your head back. Lift your chin while lengthening the back of your neck. And then as you exhale, round your spine, let your chin come in towards your chest as if your head is gonna meet your tailbone. And then continue, inhale, there's a slight lift of your chin. And then exhale, the chin comes into the chest and we round. Let's do two more cycles and we'll try to emphasize that exhalation phase as we often do. So really kind of squeeze out all the breath on the exhale. One more cycle. And then we're gonna go ahead, come back into child's pose. And as you come into child's pose, either put a block or your hands underneath your forehead, even if your forehead can reach the ground. So today we're gonna rest the forehead on the hands or a block and roll the head from right to left, giving the forehead a little massage. Let's go side to side. Let's do one more cycle. And back to the center. Okay, we'll come back up into tabletop pose. So we're gonna inhale here with that little lift of the chin. And as you exhale, tuck your toes, lift up to down dog. And as you come into down dog, Look back towards your toes, bring your chin in towards your chest just a little bit and lift your sit bones high. And then we're gonna repeat that. Knees down, look slightly forward, lift your chin a little bit. And then exhale, down dog. Let your chin come in a little bit as you look toward your toes. One more time, knees down, inhale. Exhale, downward facing dog. And then take your feet apart a little wider in your dog and walk your hands back to your feet, bend your knees a little bit, and then bring your hands to your hips and we're gonna come all the way up to stand. So find your mountain pose. I'm just gonna grab my fan a minute with all the hoopla with my iPad, I didn't get to turn it on and it's getting a little warm in here. All right, <laughs> so stand in your mountain pose, rooting down through your legs. See if you can find that kind of open peripheral vision and the soft tongue in your mouth. And then we're gonna pay attention to our feet. So rooting down into your feet, scrunch up your toes for a moment. Like you're trying to like scrunch up your mat with your toes and notice how you get tension in your feet. And now relax the feet and spread your toes out on the mat. Let's do that two more times. Squeeze the toes, so it's helping the brain to notice the contrast between tension and now more openness. Spread the toes out. One more time, squeeze. And then spread the toes out. Okay, so when we do some different things now, I want you to be aware when are you doing that grippiness with your toes, okay? Inhale, let's reach those arms up. And as you exhale, let's fold forward over the leg. You can bend your knees as much as you need to. We're gonna inhale to the halfway lift, hands on your thighs. And as you do so, lift your chin just a little bit. So not so much that you cut off circulation in the back of your neck, but just a slight lift. Now, as you exhale, start to drop your chin. Pull your chin in and fold forward over your legs. Let's do that two more times. Inhale, hands on thighs, slight lift to the chin. Exhale, chin in and fold. So that chin in gives us a little more rounding of our spine. 
which is going to shift us into more of a relaxed state. One more time, halfway lift, and then fold, and bring your chin in. Inhale, reach the arms all the way up this time. And exhale, release, arms down. So let's do two more half sun salutations, and let's keep all of that same action with our chin. So inhale, arms reach. Exhale, fold. Inhale, hands on thighs, halfway lift, little lift of the chin. Exhale, chin in and fold forward. Inhale, reach all the way up. Stretch tall and exhale, release, arms down. One more cycle here. Inhale, arms reach. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, fold, chin in. And then inhale, rise all the way up. Exhale, release. Okay, we're gonna do one more time and we're gonna stay in the forward fold a little bit now. So anytime we're in a forward fold, there's a slight rounding of our spine. It's very calming for our nervous system. So with the feet a little wider, it's gonna give a little more gentleness into the hamstrings as we fold. You can also keep a little bend in your knees. Inhale, reach the arms up. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale, halfway lift, stay there, slight lift of your chin. Now, as you exhale, we're gonna take a little sway on the way down. So kind of sway through your upper body, little side to side with your feet. Eventually, let your hands come down or hold opposite elbows and continue that gentle sway, but tuck your chin in and let the crown of the head lengthen. If you're holding opposite arms, switch them, put the opposite arm on the bottom. Continue a very gentle sway if it feels okay for you. If it makes you unsteady, stay still. Now we're gonna come back to center, hands to hips, press through your feet, bend your knees, and we'll press all the way up to stand. Very good. Okay, let's step our feet apart wide. And if you want, let's have some blocks behind you, one behind each leg. We're gonna do triangles. Some of you I know don't use the block, so it's okay if you'd rather put your hand on your shin, but they're there in case you want to use them. And we're gonna put hands on hips and the feet are three to four feet apart. We're gonna turn the right leg out so the toes face, face the short side of your mat. And turn your left toes in, widen your heel, bend into your right knee, and then take your arms up into your warrior two. Now hold here, look over your front arm to your right. And can you find that soft gaze in your eyes? So a nice wide peripheral vision and let the tongue draw back in your mouth so it's not causing a grippingness in your jaw. And then notice your feet. Is there grippiness in your feet? If there is, can you spread your toes out? We're gonna turn the palms up so we get a little softer through the elbow joint. And as you inhale, we're gonna straighten that front leg, reach your arms up high. And as you exhale, we're gonna re-bend, palms are gonna stay facing up, look over your right fingers with that soft vision. Two more times, inhale, straighten, reach the arms up. Exhale, draw down. Let it be really soft, almost like a Tai Chi movement, right? When the arms are just really soft. So we're not getting grippy in our tissues. Last round, inhale up, exhale, good. Okay, bring your hands onto your hips and we're gonna straighten that front leg. Make sure that that leg is turning open so that the kneecap doesn't roll in towards your big toe. And then like a, like a teapot, it's gonna tip to the front, tip your pelvis, so that you're starting to hinge at your hips 
And we're gonna come into triangle. You can bring your hand onto your bottom shin or onto your block and put the block under your shoulder if you're using your block. Okay, top hand is gonna stay on the hip for now. Roll that top shoulder back, spiral the bottom arm and the bottom leg so that they're turning more open without moving them. And then we're gonna take an inhale and as you exhale, turn your head down so you're looking at your big toe. And then tuck your chin under like we've been doing and lengthen the back of your head. Now take your top arm, reach it up. So we're gazing down, which is a little more calming on the nervous system. We're also getting a nice stretch through the neck. And then take your top hand, wrap it behind your back so that we get a little more open through that top collarbone. And take that top shoulder, roll it back as your chin rolls down. We might be feeling a stretch in the side of the neck. And that's a pathway of our vagus nerve. So we don't want that area to be like a traffic jam. Okay, bend into your front knee, come back to warrior two. Keep the movement nice and steady. And then straighten the leg, parallel the feet. Step it in for a moment and shake it out. Okay, so we'll do that on the other side. When you're ready, step those feet out again. Good, and then we're gonna turn the left leg out, right toes in, wide in the heel. And then we're gonna bend the knee, come into warrior two. Oh my goodness, there's a gigantic groundhog walking right outside the window. He's like, this big, he's huge. <laughs> you came to visit today. Okay, we're gonna look over the left fingers now. We're gonna find the soft gaze, nice wide gaze, and let that tongue release. Notice if you're gripping in your feet. And then we're turning the palms to face up. And as you inhale, we're gonna straighten the leg, reach the arms up and overhead. And as you exhale, softly come back to your warrior two. And let's do that a couple more rounds. Inhale, straighten, reach up. Exhale, softly coming back. Good, let's do that two more times. Watching out for all those markers so the eyes just stay nice and softly focused. Last time. And then we're gonna straighten that front leg, bring your hands on your hip, preparing for triangle. So in triangle, we want this front leg turning open toward the pinky toes. We're not dropping that knee in, spiral it open. Hands on your hips, tip your pelvis like you're a teapot, and then bring your bottom hand down to the shin or the block. Keep the top hand on the hip initially. We're gonna spiral the front leg and the front arm open. So we're not popping that shoulder forward. Now inhale, feel a lengthening through your spine. And now we're gonna turn the gaze down to look at your big toe. Tuck your chin and lengthen the crown of the head toward this top edge of your mat. Now top arm reaches up on the inhale. And as you exhale, drape it behind your back. And then we're gonna take that top shoulder and roll it back as you drop your chin and lengthen your head. And get that stretch through the neck, the top of the shoulder. One more breath. And then top arm can reach up. We're bending into that knee and we'll come back to warrior two. Straighten your leg, parallel your feet and then step everything back in and shake it out a little bit. Okay, so we're gonna do some tree pose. Balance is also a good way to kind of hone in on getting a little bit calmer. because We've got to really focus when we're balancing. So we're not letting our mind get all active and wandering all over the place. So we're gonna bring hands onto the hip, stand in your mountain pose. Find neutral pelvis. So we're gonna lift the belly, lengthen the tailbone. 
And then from here, standing on your right leg, come into just a little kickstand tree, bringing your heel above your ankle. And then press them together. And notice if you are gripping in your toes, if you can spread your toes. Get your shoulders to go back. We're gonna take the arms out to the side and keep that little softness in the elbow with your palms turning up. Let the tongue relax in the mouth, find a nice wide peripheral vision. Now, if you're still steady, go ahead and take those arms and reach them up and overhead. And palms could meet or they could stay separate. Lift up through your rib cage. Notice if you got grippy in your toes, in your jaw, soften your eyes, relax your tongue in your mouth. One more breath. And then we'll release, arms down, foot down, and take a breath here. All right, let's try the other side. Start with hands on hips, a little easier to balance. And we're gonna stand on the left leg, bring the right heel up, coming into our kickstand tree. Keep the pelvis neutral by lifting your belly and lengthening your tailbone. Good, and then arms come out to the side, palms up, little softness in the elbow. And with palms up, it gets our shoulders back and open a little bit. So we feel like we can stay open in the chest. Relax your eyes, notice any gripping. And then if you're steady, go ahead and take those arms and reach them up and overhead. Try to lift up as high as you can with your arms without gripping in your toes. Last breath here. And then we're going to release, let the arms come down, let that foot come down and shake it out a little bit. Okay, grab your blocks and put them at the top of your mat. And come back to mountain pose. Okay. Inhale, reach your arms up. As you exhale, fold, bring your hands onto your block. As you inhale, lifting through your chest, step your right foot to the back of your mat, come into a lunge, and move your blocks back in line with your front foot. We're gonna drop down onto that back knee. Back toes can be tucked or untucked. Pad the knee if it has any tenderness there. We're gonna shift from this position, which is a lunge, into a hamstring stretch. So we can maybe walk your blocks back a little bit and we're gonna straighten the front leg and lift the toes up so the leg is straight. And we're gonna alternate between those two. So bend the knee, inhale, lift your chin up a little bit, keep your eyes soft. And as you exhale, straighten the front leg and lower your chin. Bring it in towards your chest just slightly, and then repeat. Bend the knee, inhale, slightly look up. Exhale, straighten the leg, and fold in a little bit. Bring the chin in toward the chest. Two more rounds. Inhale, come forward. Exhale, draw back. One more time, inhale, come forward. Exhale, coming back. And now we're gonna hold this position for a few breaths. So you might be able to lower your blocks or bring your hands onto the floor, depending on your body. We're gonna let the chin tuck in a little bit. Stick your tailbone back, as if you're moving your sit bones behind you, but keep the chin a little tucked. And maybe you're gonna fold over your leg a little bit more. If that's too much, stay up higher. Spread your toes and try not to get grippy in your face or your jaw. 
Have a nice soft breath. One more round. And then we're gonna release and bend into that knee, come back up onto your block. Then slide that foot so it's underneath your knee. If it's not, lift the back knee. We're gonna move your blocks forward, big step forward and fold over your legs. As you fold, bring your chin in a little bit. Inhale, reach the arms all the way up. Take your time. And exhale, release, arms down at your side. Very good. Okay, let's do that on the other side. Inhale, arms reach. Exhale, fold, hands to block. As you inhale, step your left foot to the back of the mat. Move your blocks back in line with your front foot and drop your back knee down to the ground. Toes can be tucked or untucked. Pad the knee if you like. And then we're gonna shift from lunge to a half split. So you might need to move your blocks back a little bit. We're straightening that front leg, lifting the toes, and then we bend. So we bend as we inhale and we lift the chin a little bit. And then as we exhale and we come back, the chin starts to lower and we have a little bit more rounding in our spine. And repeat, inhale, come forward, slight lift of the chin. Exhale, come back, slight tuck of the chin. And you're moving slowly, so we're not kind of shocking the tissues into like, now we're straight, now we're bending, we're going a little bit slower, so giving the body more time to adapt. We're gonna do one more round and then we'll hold it. Okay, so stay here. You could lower your blocks or bring your hands to the floor. We inhale and as you exhale, draw your chin in and start to lower any amount into that forward fold. Think about moving your tailbone back, keeping your outer hips drawing into center. Let the breath be soft. One more round. And then we're gonna slowly re-bend into that front knee, come up on the block, lift your back knee, and then we're gonna step the blocks forward, step forward, and fold over your legs. Inhale, reach those arms all the way up. And exhale, bring your hands to your heart. Good. Okay, we're gonna come down to sit, grab a blanket, pillow, whatever you've got. And go ahead, take the legs out straight for a moment. Okay, then we're gonna slide both knees back into our bound angle position. And we're gonna take this kind of similar approach that we've been doing to some of our forward folds today. It's kind of like this swaying as we come into it. But first we're gonna start more of like a circle. So circle your torso around as if you're rocking from one sit bone to the other. And let those circles be nice and gentle. Don't force anything. Keep a soft gaze. And then reverse your circle and go the other way. And certainly if this is too much on your legs, you could do it with the cross leg. So change it up if you need to. Bound angle is uncomfortable. Okay, come back to the center. You could also do wide legs as another option. So if this is too much on your knees, take your legs out. Okay, bring your hands in front of you like we did with that first forward fold. And we're gonna just start a gentle swaying movement from side to side. 
and maybe allow that to help you walk your hands out a little bit. And when you feel like you've gotten to your natural stopping point without force, pause there, draw your chin in a little bit, and have three breaths. And see if you can let everything be really soft, like a sense of surrendering all of your effort. Soft breath. And then slowly start to come up. Use your hands, lift your knees, and take your feet apart wide. We're going to windshield wiper a couple times side to side. Good. Now, the next time they drop over to the right, keep the knees to the right and scoot your feet back a little bit. So we're in sort of this um, both knees bent position. It's sort of like a pigeon. If this is too much, you can sit in a cross leg position as an option. It does help to sit up on a pillow. You could also stick blocks anywhere you might need them. So it could be a block under either of the knees or under a hip if you need to. So we're gonna turn toward your right leg and start to walk it out any amount. You can pause at any point. If the swaying was nice for you, you could do a little sway. If you'd rather be still, you could do that. And you might start to walk yourself out over that leg and eventually come down to the ground as far as you can. So don't force it. Think about pulling that front sit bone back. So your right sit bone moves back away from your knee. And we're gonna breathe two more breaths. Soft breath, soft eyes, relaxed tongue. And then slowly walk yourself back up and then bring the knees up to center and drop them over to the other side. So the feet come back. Again, if this is too much, you could do cross legs and you could still do this part with the twist and then start to walk yourself out over that left knee, optional sway if you like. walking yourself deeper as your body allows. And then when you find a natural stopping point, just stay there for three breaths. Maybe let your chin tuck, let your head go. Continue to allow the breath to stay soft, eyes relaxed. After your third breath, slowly, slowly start to come up. Bring your knees back up to the center. And we're gonna straighten the right leg and let the left leg drop open like um, half bound angle. This leg might like to have a little support with a pillow, block or blanket. If you're okay without it, you don't need it depends on your body here. Sometimes if there's a little tightness in the inner thigh, it'll pull that leg up a little higher. Could also be the hip. So a couple things um, working there. Flex the right foot. And just like we've been doing, walk yourself out gently over that straight leg. Maybe there's a little sway. So allow yourself to gently go a little deeper. Now, if this is hard on your back, bring a bend into that right knee. Now, it'll just take some of the pull out of the hamstring and your lower back. Sometimes I even put a blanket under that knee. You could also use your right hand under the knee so it doesn't lock. And you could still come into your forward fold. Once you find a good spot, take a few breaths. Let your chin go in. As your chin goes in, your spine might allow you to go a little deeper.
And then slowly, slowly bring yourself up and change sides as you are ready. So left leg out, foot is flexed. Decide if you need props under the knees at all. You can bend that straight leg knee. And then start to come forward in your own time. Maybe a little sway. That sway kind of tricks the nervous system into loosening any grippiness in that back body. And it could be a really subtle sway. It doesn't have to be a big sway. Once you feel like you've gotten to your maximum, pause and let your chin come in. Let your head go. Your hands are your brakes. They can stay up as high as you need to to protect your hamstring and your lower back. Relaxing your eyes, your tongue for one more breath. And then slowly, slowly coming up, both legs out straight. And then we'll take one more forward fold. So again, you might want a blanket roll under your knees that might um, help alleviate any pull in those hamstrings. You can even just bend the knees or keep them straight. So if you know you're pretty open and your back body pretty flexible, you could keep the legs straight. If not, I would recommend a little bend there. Okay, so start to do some circles here. So circle that torso around. As you come forward, it's gonna stretch the hamstrings a little bit. But without coming into that deep forward fold just yet. And then reverse, go the other way. Try to have the circle come from your hip joint, like you're moving as low as you can. Rather than just your head, move your whole torso around. Good, come back to the center. And now start to slide those hands forward. Maybe there's a little sway coming down. And once you find your maximum, Hold for three breaths, chin tucks in, and find a nice soft breath. Try not to be grippy. So if you're gripping jaw, you're forcing yourself into the forward fold, we're not gonna be so productive in relaxing the nervous system. And we could hurt ourselves. We wanna stay in that realm of creating a sense of safety in our tissues, by using our breath, our relaxed eyes, our relaxed tongue. And then when you're ready, slowly starting to walk your hands up your legs. So use your hands so that you're not yanking on your back muscles. Carefully come up, take a pause when you get to the top. All right, so from here, we'll go ahead and come on our backs. Maybe a pillow under your head. Do you need anything for Shavasana? Keep it nearby. We're not there just yet. <clears throat> so we'll take our feet flat. Think about moving your tailbone away from your shoulders. You create a little length in your low back. And then we're gonna bring, um, actually let's take the pillow out for a moment if you can tolerate it and bring your arms into goalpost position so that your elbows are in line with your shoulders and your hands are in line with your elbows. We're gonna do just a gentle rocking on the pelvis. So as you inhale, tip your pelvis forward and your lower back lifts off the ground. And as you exhale, we're gonna flatten the lower back, lift through the tailbone without lifting off the ground. And then repeat. Inhale, there's a very small arch. Exhale, we're flattening. 
And now as you do this, come back to those nice relaxed eyes. And notice that with the rocking of the pelvis, there's a reciprocal rocking of the head. So your chin might lower a little bit as you arch, come down towards your chest. And as you flatten your lower back, the chin might lift up a little bit. So well, this is a cranial sacral rhythm between our sacrum and our head, our cranium, that is very important to our nervous system. Of course, it connects our spine, our spinal column is in between these two bony land planes. And as we do this little gentle pump, it helps move the spinal fluid, keeps our spine nice and lubricated and flexible and is also very soothing, this rocking motion, soothing for our nervous system. So I'm gonna do two more rocks. So a little bit easy on the arch and a little bit longer on the flatten. One more time. And then relax back to just a normal position here. Let your arms come down. And then we're gonna bring both of the knees into the chest and give them a good squeeze. And let your lower back kind of drop into the ground. Let your rib cage kind of melt into the ground. Shoulder blades. Back of the skull, everything dropping heavily into the ground. And then you can take that into a happy baby. So either holding behind your knees or holding your ankles or feet. <clears throat> can you stay soft in your eyes, your face, your tongue? Even soft in your belly. Breathe into your belly. Sometimes it's also nice to add a rock here in our happy baby. All this kind of circling, swaying, rocking, these are all really soothing things. You know, when you have a little child, all the things that help soothe them. I know my kids always like stuff like that. If I pick them up and sway them around or you know, bouncing, rocking. All right, hug those knees back into the chest one more time. And then go ahead, find your Shavasana. So you can let your legs come down, find any supports that would be helpful that are nourishing. Maybe the lower back needs some support. So you could um, put something under your knees or under your head. And if you're cold, if you tend to get cold, make sure you put a cover on. Because as the body relaxes, we actually get cooler. As we're in that more amped up state, the heat builds in our body. We get that sort of like redness in our tissues and our face and our skin flushing. So as we, drop into a state of rest and relaxation, we might get cold a little easier. And then let that back body melt into the ground, particularly all those bony landmarks, so the back of the skull, as if it could spread into the ground backs of your shoulders, the back of your rib cage, the back of your sacrum. But all those areas really drop into the ground. Find a nice, slow, soft breath. And with each exhale, a sense of releasing, dropping, into the support of the ground. 
Scan your body for any tension, any gripping. And imagine the breath moving into those areas for a few cycles. Maybe even repeat the word soften in your mind until those areas of tension start to dissolve. And take a couple more minutes continuing to rest. Right, so we're gonna take our time, start to let your breath deepen a bit, wiggle fingers and toes. Don't rush out of your relaxation, take your time. You can come over to your side in your own time for a few moments before carefully pressing yourself back up. And we're just going to sit in a comfortable seat for a couple moments. We're going to turn the palms up, which is a little softer, a little more open, and bring your thumb and index fingers to touch. Sitting up tall through the center, and then either a soft gaze or close your eyes. Find a soft, soft belly breath. Relax the corners of your eyes. Allow the tongue to recede back from your bottom teeth and rest in the pool of the bottom of your mouth. Notice any moisture coming in, sign of relaxation. And then we're going to add a mantra. So mantra is a word that we repeat in our mind or out loud, but we're going to do it in our mind. 
that can aid in a particular, um, you know, particular goal we might have. And in this case, quieting the mind, quieting the nervous system. And that word is shum. It's spelled S-H-A-M, but pronounced more like a, a soft U, shum. So inhale, softly into the belly, exhale, shum, in your mind. This is a mantra given by my teacher for the particular effect of bringing in a sense of calm and peace. Keep repeating that every exhale. Every inhale softly into the belly. Notice if your tongue is still relaxed in the bottom of your mouth. Light part to your lips and your jaw. And then from here, we'll bring our hands together in front of our heart space. Have a nice inhalation, and as you exhale, bow your head down to your heart. And namaste. Thank you so much, everyone. All right, I hope you have a very good week. I hope you are nice and relaxed. Thank you. Very relaxing. Thank you. Good, good. All right, I will see you guys next week. I'll see you guys, my family, on Sunday. And I'll okay. see, I will see you Do Friday you know too, Kathy, right? Right. Yeah, okay. Don't let me forget that. Okay. <laughs> okay Do you need bye. me to text you and remind you? No. Okay. I hope not. All right. Bye. All right, have a good week. Bye, Pat. Yeah. Thank you. Mm-hmm.